awards uh, for testing excellence. Shuni ha has won uh, community awards like software testing thought leadership, uh, test republic uh, testing challenge among others. Um, he holds a postgraduate degree in mechanical engineering. Wow, that's a step back, Shuni, uh, from uh, IIT Chennai and worked in organizations like I2, Aditi, Microsoft, iGate, HCL, Barclays, wow, that's a long array of uh, organizations. <laughs> Quite a few jobs, I must say. Over to you, Shady. Um, it feels terrible to be sitting there waiting for your turn. Heart beats fast. It's, it's a terrible turn. Uh, I was told that uh, there will be eggs. I was warned that this is a very controversial topic. There will be eggs thrown on me. I am ready for eggs. How many eggs I get today depends upon uh, how people perceive the talk as, and uh, the, the number of eggs that I get will let me know whether I dare to take such topics again when I speak again. Uh, the, this slide is a very boring slide, okay, and uh, I had been asked my, by my employer to sponsor a trip. I was sent from Pune to be here. All the opinions expressed in this talk are purely my own, and they in no way relate to that of my employer. Okay, we are talking about uh, death. How does it feel? How does it feel to see a profession that you hold very close to your heart? Somebody says it's death. How does uh, a teacher feel when tomorrow the schools are closed and you have no job as a teacher? How does a doctor feel tomorrow there are no hospitals and your profession is dead? Feels terrible, right? I felt that way. And in this presentation, let's go over what it means to be dead, who is saying so, and what is in store for us. If it is really dead, tomorrow when we go back to office, what will we do? Let's mull over that in the next uh, few minutes. These are three gentlemen, out of which only one person uh, belongs to testing, James Whitaker. The two other are from development. They did software development, software engineering. And last year, these three people at different conferences started talking about testing is dead, testing is dead, testing is dead. You know what it mean? An idea that spreads like virus, something like viral thing on the YouTube stuff. In last year, all the conferences, it has become fashion for people to say testing is dead. Let's go over each one of these, and when we did, when, when you say something is dead, what do we do is do some kind of a post-mortem as a, as a doctor. Right? We are testers, we are investigators, we take this theme also as a testing problem to us. We will go over this and see what does it mean. Dr. Alberto. Alberto Sovaya is a well-known uh, uh, technologist, founder of Exitar and a big guy in Google. And when he said he taught this in a, in a GTAC, Global, uh, Google Test uh, Automation Conference, and he said testing is dead, few of the ideas about why he said testing is dead are, are put here. Basically, his theme was with the speed in which the business is moving. We are service to business, business is moving. It means we are like a trailer to a uh, main thing that pulls it up apart. If that goes speed, we have to go speed. And he made a statement that people are saying now quality second, speed first. He said, what is important is product bugs versus idea bugs. It is important to find idea bugs. If the idea is false, there's no point in building a product. Fail there, rather than failing when you're building a product. Fail fast, and fail cheaper. And we all know, I think this is still a questionable that if you find something early, it is good, so that we can discard thing and move on. So, Testing is that because you need to fail fast, idea bugs are important, go and fail fast and cheaper. Focus on building the right it, which means the focus on the idea and the implementation of the product, than building it 
uh, right. QA and automation testing is dead because in view of the speed first, quality second, testing becomes like a blocker to you. It, it doesn't allow you to think through. How many, how, how many of you uh, felt that uh, by logging so many bugs, you are delaying the product release? Right? It is something which you can relate to. The word quality is tainted, which means that everybody talks about quality as though it's a fashion thing. I'm a quality assurance guy. I do this, I do that. In the name of quality, you actually demean your profession. And Alberto talked about this by saying uh, the word quality and somebody who says, I am a quality assurance guy, then the developer says, if you are a quality assurance guy, what am I then? Everybody is responsible for quality. Why you wear a hat that I am a quality assurance guy and take every credit? That was the point there. Testing slows you down. It's bad. In the fast world, if testing is slowing you down, it's bad and people don't like it. So with all these imperatives, Dr. Alberto's statement, you say that this patient called testing is dead, let's move on. Geico is another person, uh, if people have heard about specification by example and technique like that, this guy is, is one of the creator of that uh, uh, idea. What he said is a little subtle difference there in the way the people are perceiving the phrase testing is dead. He didn't say testing is dead. Instead he says testing phase is dead. Which he meaning that uh, the part of SDLC that we call as testing is no more there. Because he gave examples which are very uh, important to, right? there is a merit in the argument. What he says is that we always crib that testing gets the small chunk of time that you can do, always. Developer always delays, right? When this happens, we always ask to squeeze, do less, risk-based, do all the prioritization so that you can do less of testing. Even then, nobody cribs, at least from the management. It is, it is done last, nobody cribs. It is given the very least priority, nobody cribs. Tester is the one who is not respected by developers, nobody cribs, which means that there is no value in doing that at all. Look at value of testing, and that is a very important point there. Value of testing as you go forward, later in the cycle, diminishes, which means the testing phase as we do late and late in the cycle after you started your initial requirements till you go for production, all of that, value of that is going to be diminishing, so nobody cares about it. What is good of, what is value of a good product? if you thoroughly test it and release it to the people, which nobody uses. It will take years and years to produce a solid product with all techniques done, thorough testing done, and by the time the industry has moved on and there is no value for the product. What is the value of that? Now, you might find an argument, you, you, you might find an agreement in the arguments of uh, Geico that we are seeing passing in a world where testing phase is dead. And see that beautiful hanging picture of a tester, which is kind of a little misleading because he said, not tester is dead, testing phase is dead. Tester is still there. James Whitaker, you must have uh, heard his books, his famous uh, uh, how to break software, how to break software security. He's a very well known guy. And off late, he started singing the uh, tone that testing is dead, testing is dead. Few of the ideas that are very important are this, and you need to make note of it, and I find a lot, uh, lot of merit in the argument. Developers are getting better in doing code. All the innovations that have come up in the recent time is not because of testing. They are because of development. Developers are getting code, better code. They have better tools to do it now. Writing test plan is based of time. How many of you agree? That yeah, you will not raise hands because your managers are asked not, not to raise the hands. Right? We know where the bugs are. That's a statement he made. It might be a little controversial. Finding them in the shortest time is ridiculously low now. 
Now come back to our what we have taught in our schools or software testing initiation. Finding bugs in the early life cycle is good. It takes 24 times, 30 times, 40 times cheaper than finding them later. That is something which you have to unlearn. Throw it out of your mind. No longer we are doing, at least in the larger part of the world, we are doing, I am doing requirement analysis today, testing uh, design begins today. My first build is eight months away. How many of us are in the projects like that? Very few. World is changing. So you need to figure out how does testing fit into this changing world. Testing makes developers complacent. It's a safety net for them. If there is more testing, he said, I'm a developer. There is a guy who is there. He's a paid person to do the finding. My, his, 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 his job is to find bugs in my code. If he's doing it not, if he's not doing his job, why should we pay them? That's how the point is saying that having a well big testing team makes developers complacent. Cloud advantage. He gives this fantastic example of Facebook, Twitter, and likes of uh, the social media sites. You must be aware, or might not be aware, how many times Facebook does uh, changes in a day. One estimate to be believed, they on one bad day, they made about 25 changes in the site. 25 times releases. On a cycle, test cycle, which is so fast, you are no longer getting even a day to test. Day is gone, it's like hours to test. In that, if we say, hey, first get me a requirement plan, I will go to write test cases, I get reviewed by BA, all the things that we're familiar, is it possible for us to get that time to do that? Guys, wake up, we are in a new world. Don't get stuck with that waterfall mentality that you will get a requirement document, you will get a KT, somebody will write a test cases for you, it will be reviewed by somebody. After one month, somebody else will execute. After executing, somebody else will lock the bug. That time is gone. Okay? And crowdsourcing. What he's saying is that with a cloud advantage, I forgot to mention the cloud advantage. I need to figure out how I'm doing the time. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, with a cloud advantage, uh, Advantage, we can release it to a, a small you know, set of people. We can get uh, quicker feedback, and testing is still not required. So with the crowdsourcing, cloud, developers are getting better. Where is testing happening? It's going away out of our hands. post madam report now. Quick summary. People are saying testing is dead because there's a speed first, quality second is hitting everybody. Idea bugs are important. New agile, fragile methods are coming up. Idea bugs are important. Cost of finding and fixing and deploying the fix is ridiculously low. Right? This is the context we're talking about. But how many of you relate to this situation? How many of you say it is true? No hands. A few hands. Which means that we are in a different world. Are we? Now, if you look at that picture on the left, uh, right side, you see some of the companies that talk about. What do you call those companies as? They are consumers of IT. And all this the thing that you see here, the postmortem exam, postmortem result, and given by uh, likes of these people, relate to the world of software makers. By any guess, you can clearly say that the number of people in the services world, IT consumer world, is bigger than product world. So you might still ignore that, oh, that doesn't happen in my world, right? Two world views. I just put these things together. The two world views are, there are people who make software, there are people who consume IT or consume software. Testing is dead in one world. Which one? The left one. The right one is still testing is still there. You can still aram, say, get your requirements and write test cases, it's still going on. Let's figure out where does it take us to. New world, news from other world, testing is not dead, but looks like the people from this industry talk each other. They move from one company to other companies. All these days, when I, when I, when I keep hearing about this term that testing is dead because Agile is catching up and developers are becoming smarter and all that, I still said, it's not in my world, but not anymore. I'm seeing people from likes of Google and becoming like CEOs of some IT companies. They bring those all ideas 
lift them and say, now let me implement this. All the companies in IT are saying, why can't we run like Twitter? Why can't we run like Facebook? Why can't we be faster and giving services to the customers quicker? Which means we are no longer isolated. Okay, testing is in a other world is not dead, but again the influence is coming in a big way to this world. Culture, legacy, business context, all these things are making big impact on both worlds, and you can't say that we are isolated. Now, think about this. When things change, when we move from post uh, card to email, things change. We move from postcard to email. Now nobody writes postcard letters, very few. When we moved from that old style phone to Samsung S3 or iPhone 5. When we moved from film cameras to digital cameras. And we are going through that kind of a change now in our profession as well. When we moved from postcard to email, did we say communication is dead? No. When we moved from this phone to that phone, did we say uh, uh, you know, oral communication is dead? No. When we move from film camera to uh, uh, digital camera, did we say photography is dead? No. But what is happening is there are better and newer ways of doing things in the same way as these changes suggest. When we change happens, there is a reluctance on one end. We'll hold on to what we what we have, and there is uh, the people who uh, you know idea changers who will say motivate. This is happening. Move on. The other area. Now emerging new order where the two worlds meet. And this is what is the reconciliation of these two worlds together. Business is a primary driver, and that is deciding everything. Skill testing is value when it is, is in the fits in the context. If you understand in which context you're operating, either product or IT, you, you have to model your testing, you have to model your knowledge to fit that part. If it is not fitting, it goes away. Role of testing in speed of uh, speed first quality approach, we need to really figure out. If the speed is important, how am I improving my skills to aid that kind of a uh, uh, you know, testing approach, which helps that? If we, what if we don't do any testing? And that is a possibility now, very much possibility now. In that case, where we go, how do we add value to the teams with our skeptics, with our intelligent skills, with our skills to find problems? We need to think about that. Only that testing will survive. That's my uh, you know, projection or prediction that listens to its stakeholders and the relevant business context. If the testing is happening in isolation with, from the developers, it is going to be dead. If testing is brain dead, it is going to be dead. Provides information what is thought, not provides information that it's supposed to give. At the speed which is at the reasonable cost to the business, it adopts and adapts to the changing need and the speed. Only that testing will survive. Other testing is, is dead for that, for, for all you know. Closing remarks, testing is dead, long live testing, because we are still here. There's a job security. Don't take the words literally, but take it seriously. Listen and align to your bosses, very important. Whichever context you're operating, be aware of where you're going. There is some job security. Testers are going to be there. Testing is going to be there as communication, photography, and all things are going to be there. But only thing, there is a new way of doing things. Keep talking to the people in the other world. Very important. If you are in product, talk to IT. If you are in IT, talk to product. How they are testing. Understand what are the imperatives. Understand how the things are going. Manage your skills like you manage your portfolio. It's very important. You know, Devakar talked about manage skills and all that. And probably I just want to add to that is it's very important. Don't let your manager or a company manage your skills. You become owner of your skills. You understand what is happening in the world, and you build your skills. Never stop learning. And ask the question, where is your radar? I use this as a metaphor to say, when we improve our skills, we say, OK, we keep on adding our skills. Think of it like a radar, right? A radar keeps sweeping like a lighthouse light, and it's sweeping the area and trying to pick what is coming up. Set up your testing radar and see what is coming up in other area, what is happening there, what is happening there, which tool coming here, what technique is coming here, which domain is new, what is changing. Keep sweeping that area and make sure that those are in, the, in, in your radar. And 
when we learn more, what we are actually doing is we are we are spending your we are you are expanding your reach of the radar. It's like uh, your uh, uh, you know mobile phone signal, right? You should be always in full signal with respect to this radar. Always move and be in the area where your signal is high. And uh, thanks to the uh, likes of QAI and conferences like this, which help, which give opportunities for people to come and talk and exchange ideas, these conferences, like of QAI, act like a uh, you know, telephone towers, right? They make sure that the signal is strong, your radar, but it will work only if you know where is your radar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shri. That is, that is a pretty uh, interesting closing remark as well as the radar analogy. Again, the radar goes and applies back to the back benches because they are in the low signal area. <laughs> so, oh wow, the first hand for the question goes up at the back. So, oh, we will, yeah, I saw the f hands in the front, but the fastest uh, hands first went up at the back. So, no problem, we'll start at the back and then uh, move forward. Right uh, so, did. Um. It's very good that I recognize faces and see the names. My memory is good. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, so, uh, question to you is that uh, we we all understand the fact that you know uh, this whole theme of uh, shift left versus happening yesterday, or what you talked about. That's that. Know, the not look at the testing phase. Look uh, left, up, wherever. Uh, the point is that net net. Are you are you uh, saying in in one dimension that uh, you know our thinking of two things. One is verification as an activity is dead. Verification as an activity at the fag end of the life cycle is dead. And are you saying that testers need to reskill themselves and think more like developers in terms of how do I use code, my ability to program and find defects rather than wait at the fag end and look at the system like a black box and find defects? Is it what you're trying to head towards? I'm just trying to understand. Okay, I will answer this way. I, I refer to the thing that I said in the uh, uh, one of the slides. Listen to your bosses. Understand your context. First thing is understand your context. If you are in a services industry, do what your bosses say. But keep improving your skills. Keep things in your radar. Okay. To answer your question, is verification dead? I will not say verification dead. If you are in a if you are in a services industry, you you need to do verification, and that keeps on. There is a value to it. As for your business, as for your client, there is a value to it. Keep doing it. Improving it, find ways to do it better. And to the question of get doing a beginning, now if you are working in a in a agile, if you are working in a product companies where the whole idea of tester, the role of tester is dissolving into something which is something a part of a team. You sit with the developer and help him to do the uh, unit test, and you sit with the uh, uh, you know infrastructure guy to set up the uh, thing, and you do a UAT, which means that the testing is all over. In fact, it happens in parallel. If you're doing development here and sitting with it, the moment he's done his class, you just say, I can do run testing, fix it, right? So it is important that the people who are in, in, a, in a frog in the well, sorry for using this analogy, frog in the well, come out of the frog and be like somebody, have your longer radar and keep using it. So short answer to the question is, while remaining in a context, serving your bosses and your business and your client is important, Make sure that your radar is bigger. Yeah. I think this is one question for Amra. Yeah. Uh, the, the whole presentation that you presented is very good and uh, really thought provoking. So, when I summarize the presentation, what I felt is you are more hinting towards saying that agile testing is the way ahead. Is that is my understanding right? Or okay, my first very strong belief. I fought with so many people on the Twitter. There is no such thing called agile testing. Okay. There is no such thing called agile testing. But there is testing that happens in agile teams. So I am not hinting towards even in this mysterious term called agile testing, what I'm hinting is there is a context, there is a world in which the so-called testing phase, a very clearly defined role of testing, somebody who works in isolation in the development, that part in that context is dead since 
the people from that world are becoming bosses here in the services world. They are carrying that analogy, they are carrying that business model here and supporting these people, services people. I can quote my own example of my own bank, people saying that you need to run like Apple and Twitter, Very much, yes, yes. which means e even in our world, services world, change is happening. So I am not branding, I am not kind of summarizing saying world is moving to agile. No. World is moving to a context which I agree with Alberto, speed first, quality second. Put it in your mind very big time, whether you are in services, whether you are in product. So a testing that helps you to gain speed for the product, you are serving your customer better, you are serving your, your business, you are serving your client better. If that part is taken care of, you are catching the speed with that, you are fine. So, so, it's really, it's just so I really have to, I mean there are questions so we will have to make sure we have more questions and participation. I know there are discussion threads. Uh, I also have a lot of uh, thought provoking one from the previous gentleman uh, saying that, you know, moving left, so we have to reskill. So I would also like to get in discussion and I'll do that with Shwini on the sides. So catch him uh, during the tea break. Let's move to more questions. Uh, I know your thought uh, is, is very, very provoking. Uh, you he's, know, like, he's like he's like uh, stopped in the middle. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, okay, just park your thought. Let me take uh, questions quickly sure. and also have a little time uh, on our side. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for the nice presentation. I think. Uh, Hello. Just keep it closer to your mouth. Yes. I think uh, you have raised uh, this uh, topic somewhere in the month of March or April. Yeah. That's I think true. It, is a it is a repeat presentation. Sorry, I did not make. I did not make the disclaimer. I, I, ca I can make out what you wrote over there and what you have done. Good. People write. People read my blogs too. That's a self promotion. Okay. <laughs> Before going further, maybe I'll borrow one quote which was there earlier in the morning. I mean, prevention is better than detection. And mm. there was some quote someone presented over here. Okay. Mm. Having said that, uh, I think you basically talking about our father says testing. And our, I mean, you are comparing a father says testing with the kid says testing. I mean, there are 20% of the people who are already uh, following or advocating that 20% of testing by saying that I strongly feel by seeing the 20 percent who are already up, um, following the new practices, we are saying towards the other 80 percent and saying, no, you are dead, you are dead. It's not the testing is dead, right. not principles are dead. Everything is there, only thing is we are comparing father says testing with our kids says testing. Oh, so uh, talking about 80-20 thing, a, uh, I would say in, in, a, in a very rough guess, 80, 80 is services world. 20 is product world. If 20 20% 20 people are saying testing is dead, ideally we shouldn't be worried about. But we should be yes, because the Pareto rule. No, Pareto doesn't work here. <laughs> okay. See, I can really take many more questions. If the question is really short and sharp, we show all the answers. The reason we are not able to recommend it, I would I'd like to have 10 questioners. Provided your questions are 10 seconds and the answers are 20. Just to correct it. Uh, Srini, I also believe that uh, fast to market is a better means today we need to be uh, first in the market to compete with others. But uh, as a product company, it also depends on what type of product you are selling in the market. Because there are some things which are quality critical, some things which are fast to market. Right. Based on that, we need to decide as a business. I would say. Yeah, and, 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 the, and the comment to that is, uh, in Alberto's thing, he said, idea bugs are important, not the product bugs. If idea is wrong, don't build the product. <laughs> Only involvement is a Yes. Again, conceptual idea validation rather than going to product. Tekar saying that uh, speed is the first and quality important. And I have been, personally, I have been saying if HDFC bank payment uh, transfer is down for two days, nobody will bother. Do we move and take our uh, account and put somewhere else? The whole idea of if there is a bug, and this, this is how people threaten, right? This is this the intimidation way. See, if there are bugs in your software, customers will move away. Most of us don't. Do we change our bank if the website is down? No. And but now today, Justin's presentation made uh, made me realize that in some cases, especially if it's a high stake situation like Apple, people do. People postpone their decision to buy iPhone 5. Senior executives get fired which means testing is serious. Having said that, I also put my critical thinker at on. 
and this is again another intimation, intimidation technique by all testers, me included. Whenever there's some disasters or a fiasco happens in testing, we start taking gung ho, good, good, good. This is, see, look at this bug happened. Because of lack of testing, testing is important. You shouldn't be doing that. Business is important. Serving customer is important. Looking what is what is useful in your today's world, does it make sense to pay that much to do that? In today's term, what 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 is worth for money is important. Shini, I'm really sorry. I mean, this is this can we actually this should have been a debate topic. Last <laughs> you chose the wrong topic, Shini. Hmm? Uh, very I mean, very quick and closing last question on the yeah. board. So I'm sorry. You talked about the speed. So, like, take an analogy with respect to the cars. The car company trying to push their models earlier in the market and then they recall. So, how does you deal with these uh, situation in software world? Okay. Whole different economy to recall. I mean, Shiri will go on to prove that even recall is less less expensive than a delayed car and the loss of customers. There's a I will not make that argument. Only argument I make is I have been personally I have been a big critic of people lifting the ideas from manufacturing and try to be it. I am big big critic of a people who say Six Sigma, Lean, and all that. Pick from manufacturing where we have where we deal with the concrete things and deal apply with a situation like a software which is no longer. A, you know, white collar you know, knowledge work, it has become like that. But I can't take a manufacturing analogy and put it to car, put it to what we do in software because we deal with ideas, we deal with abstract things. It's, it is impossible. I am personally feeling you can't take that analogy and put it here. And probably I, I, no, I can fix it. I'm really sorry. I'm, you have to. Uh, you know what I'll do as a, as a special gesture and favor. We'll tie Shini up to a pole here after the talks. <laughs> Make sure that all of you surround him. And uh, you know, either he has to become a punching bag or he'll punch you back. This is really the egg that I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Shiri. A big round of applause. I mean, that was a wonderful paper. And you picked up a very thought provoking and, and a debatable topic. I'm not sure by, by intention, design, or default. Right. I, I spoke in STC in yes. 2003. Thanks, Pradeep, for getting me back here and giving me a slot to talk. Otherwise, I would be queuing in the regional rounds to present, sir, this is my topic, please tell. I'm happy that I could get a chance to talk to you people. Thank you.